Hello everybody, what is up? My name is King Spinach, and welcome to a brand new series, uh, something that I've never really kind of done before on the channel. Uh, as some of you guys may know, uh, this is like my first uh, series after being gone for like three or four months, uh, busy with a bunch of work. Uh, there's a video up for that if you guys want to check that out. Uh, but welcome to Massive Chalice. So uh, Massive Chalice was the game that I got for free uh, this month. I'm just going to make sure the subtitles are on. Um, yeah, okay. So Massive Chalice was the game that I got for free with the Games for Gold this month. Um, and I'm playing on Xbox One, obviously. And this game is like XCOM meets like a fantasy world. And I really, really like it so far. Uh, I really wanted to play through it mostly blind with you guys. Uh, so I haven't gone too far in the game, um, and like XCOM, it's kind of not roguelite-esque, but you will play through it multiple times, because you basically have a 300-year time period, um, and I've only played up to the first 30 years before I've stopped, or before I've realized that I must have made a mistake or a wrong decision or something, but I've played through the start of the game two or three times, so I know what kind of initial strategy I want to have going into this. And yeah, it's a really, it's like a strategy game. And so uh, it's gonna, it's called Game 2. And I'm gonna not turn on the tutorial when we play. I'm gonna keep it on normal. I don't know why it's on hard. And um, I'm gonna go on iron mode because I'm not gonna be changing my choices anyway. Uh, since it's a let's play, I want it to be, you know, with you guys. And I think we're gonna go for both thematic names and silly names. And I really, really like this game. Like, this game, the humor is so funny. Uh, it really, you know, the first time that I tried it out, I was like, oh my god, I, I didn't expect it to be funny. I thought it was going to be super serious or something. Um, and I'm a huge fan of XCOM. I love playing XCOM. So uh, having it on Xbox One and being able to record it and share it with you guys is definitely something that I'm really looking forward to. And uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop yammering and let the intro cutscene play out here. Uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Welcome to Massive Chalice. Oh, jeez, I forgot I have to pick houses. Uh, okay, I think I'm just gonna go random houses. We're just gonna go random. Yep. Alright. Now you can sit back, relax, and enjoy. I'm gonna sip my iced coffee here. It's taking too long. Patience. Patience. I don't see what patience has to do with this. It should have happened by now. Life keeps to its own timetable, not ours. Oh, it doesn't stop us from trying. Good morning. Your ruler has risen. Rejoice, and let bellow the horns of birth. Immortal protector of the nation, progeny of the great bloodlines, master of strategies, eternal conductor, and forger of matrimony. We're here to advise you on how to handle ruling and commanding... Every time. The horns of battle. Fine. We'll have to do this later. The Cadence is attacking. Heroes, jump in. The ruler will be with you shortly. And off they go. We'll explain later. We just need you to take command because our citizens, understandably, find it hard to trust a giant talking chalice. We are not just a giant talking chalice. But the nation will listen to you because you're of their blood. Forge from the bloodlines of the great houses. Oh, and one last thing. Unfortunately, the bloodline ritual that was used to create you also bound you to us. So you can never leave the throne. But do not despair. You can still command your heroes. Look inward, and you will find that your mind can follow them anywhere. Onward! We don't want to keep the Cadence waiting. Alright, so yeah, any of you guys who have ever played XCOM before see uh, the familiarity here uh, between XCOM and um, Massive Chalice. So it's kind of like a turn-based strategy game, which is kind of like an RPG because you have your soldiers here, your uh, fighters, um, ah, and... Ooh. Found one of our alchemists. A brilliant mind in a delicate body. Not worth much in a close quarters battle, but they make up for it with their nasty exploding flasks. Just watch out for friendly fire. The explosions are big, so aim well, or keep your heroes back. Trust us, you don't want to be on the receiving end of one of their concoctions. 
So I'm just looking at the map here, and this the whole thing is the map. Granted, there's not going to be uh, enemies in like the entire thing, but that's still it's just gigantic, and it's mind-boggling to me that it's just huge. Um, so you have three different types of soldiers. You have a hunter who's kind of ranged character, um, and they can all do melee attacks, but the hunter is a uh, more ranged. And you have the alchemist who has a decent melee attack, but can also throw like a bomb, a flask type thing that does like a little damage in a small radius. Unfortunately, if they miss, because they do have a chance to miss, and hunters have a chance to miss too, um, they can actually hit your own teammates. So it's, you gotta be a little bit careful when placing people around enemies that you wanna throw stuff at. Um, and then this we have the- This is the caber, Jack. Oh. They hit things with a caber. Sometimes they hit hard and put things <laughs> down. Other times they hit not so hard and just knock things out. That's all you're going to say. Simplest way of life there is. Caber yeah. Jacks, profound purveyors of violence. Yeah, so I guess they kind of explained what caber jacks are. They're your basic like melee unit. Like you run up to people and you just wail on them with the caber. So that's the huge thing here. The other important part is um, your heroes. So each of your heroes has traits and they have their families. And their traits are going to basically be what uh, determines whether or not we choose them to um, like be in charge of keeps or whether we decide that they want to be uh, de devoted to research or they want to be soldiers. So right here, looking at this guy, there's good things and bad things. Number one, good thing, uh, is that he is brainy and he has child tendency. Uh, an increased chance of having boys or girls doesn't matter. That's super good because that uh, means that you have like an increased chance of passing down specific traits. Um, unfortunately, he's got some bad stuff like nearsighted, which is decreased sight range. Although um, looking at it, it could that could be either good or bad. Um, I think it's more likely to be bad because other the cadence, which is the enemies in this game will be able to see him before he can see them, so they might be able to get the jump on him, which is kind of bad. And sluggish is also bad because we start getting hit by range attacks, it's going to be not that good. Um, Stalwart's okay though. He also has a sibling uh, who is strong-willed and has bear strength, which is really good. Um, unfortunately, his sickly stat is not good. That doesn't make me want to use him, so... Um, this alchemist, though, is absolutely not good. Uh, he has the asthmatic trait, and that is really, really bad. If you need to run away from a bunch of enemies and set up your attack better, or something like that, the asthmatic trait is so bad. And if his siblings also have it, yeah, one of his siblings also has asthmatic. So that means that they're very, very likely any of these uh, the breaker children, any of the breaker children, are very likely when they have children to pass on the asthmatic trait. So that that's something that we obviously don't want in our soldiers, so we're not likely to make them rulers of like our keeps or whatever. Um, just looking at this guy, Turek Riven, um, the sickly is not good. Madam Derp, <laughs> that's a great name. Um, she has just plain negative traits, low intelligence. Impressionable is good, but slow learner is bad. Uh, this alchemist guy is hardy and slow. Slow is a bad trait that you don't want, and it another one of his uh, uh, one of his sister. Oh no, one of his brothers. Her brothers. My bad. Has um the no no yeah one of his sisters yeah okay his sister has the slow trait also which is bad, but his other brother has quick study, which is really good. So, yeah, that's just a quick look at our heroes. We're not gonna do deal too much with that right now, because right now we're in the middle of the battle. Attacking at close range is good, but attacking from afar, where one can think and plan, is better. If you listen closely, you might be able to hear your group leaving you behind as you line up that perfect shot. Actually, the hunter will be in front of the group, stealthily scouting ahead. Is that what they say they're doing? So the cool thing about the hunter is that even though he's a ranged character, you can also do a stealth move. So if you go into an environment that's tall, you basically blend in and you just kind of like sit there. And uh, this is good for like scouting really far ahead, but at the same time, if you're far ahead and you're too far away from your teammates, especially if you're far ahead right up next to the enemy, uh, it's gonna be bad because you won't have caber jack support. And if an alchemist tried to throw a flask uh, and you're right next to the enemy, that's really bad because you could be hit by it. So 
there's a whole bunch of things to take into account so we're not going to move too too far ahead just a couple tiles out of range of uh, our other soldiers so essentially just like XCOM uh, your soldiers have like two moves they have their orange move which is their first standard action and then uh, their gray move which is their second action and you can just do an automatic gray move straight off the bat but since I sprinted with that guy uh, he's gonna have an asthma attack which is bad so running away and moving up to catch up with the rest of the squad is gonna be really bad so um, it's gonna be tough for him now I think we're gonna try and round this corner and see what's over here oh we have no enemies yet this is actually kinda good it's gonna let us walk around a little bit now one of the most important things that I've found to do is make sure that your line of sight is being blocked or being used effectively at all times. Um, so if you're sneaking into, if you're going into tall environments like this where your soldiers cannot see outside of, like he, they can't see anywhere past this because of the line of sight because it's a tall environment. And they don't take cover like in XCOM. It's not there's no real cover mechanic here. It's just all about strategic movement. So see, he's right around the corner. He's one tile away, so he can't look out, uh, which is actually kind of good because then I can put him here. Ah, oh, we got some enemies. Ah. First catch of the day. We can't all right, so we're gonna move towards him. because not much is known. It's old, first sighted centuries ago. It cares only for destroying our nation with its corruption. That's where pawns like you see here come in. Think of them as attack dogs the Cadence creates to spread corruption in the world. Okay, so... Alright, that's a lapse. So a lapse is like a ranged character, and seeds are little tiny weaklings. So they'll run up to you and shoot you. That's their... Or they'll run up to you and hit you, sorry. That's their goal and since we have a decent shot with the hunter here i think we're actually gonna uh we're gonna just take it so let's take that shot now when she takes the shot she's revealed so she's no longer <laughs> i love the motto um when she takes the shots she gets revealed so she's now no longer hidden from the enemy but what we're gonna do now is move our alchemists over to this side uh Let's see. Is there other alchemist out there? She is. Oh no, there he is. Sorry, it's Christopher. We're gonna move them up to the corners, and we're gonna move our caber jacks up a little bit closer than our alchemists are. So the battle plan is that when the lapse comes back, and I just and you can end your turn early there, so you don't have to spend an action. You don't have to move at one point. What we're gonna try to do is we're gonna move in with the hunter here. Let's do a gold move first. Okay, there's the lapse. So we know where uh, we know where it is. Now a lapse is a range character. And uh, it's actually it's actually kind of dangerous because if it hits you, or it hits your hero, sorry, your hero will actually lose XP for that turn. I'm just gonna skip everybody's turn because I want everybody to wait here. And hopefully the lapse will move back towards us. Uh, but it doesn't seem like that's gonna happen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a shot. Oh, we have an 80% chance. Okay, I'm gonna take a shot with our hunter, but I think I'm gonna take it from here. Just because you get a little closer. Ah, okay. All right, I'm glad that I moved. Cadence cowards. They'd rather stay back and snipe at you than fight up close. Okay, I guess. Your heroes are hit. They may forget some of their combat. Yeah, and your people can panic, so that's kind of bad. Especially if they have some traits that lean towards panicking. So I backed off there because I don't want to activate all three of those guys in one turn because I don't want to get hit by the lapses and lose XP. Oh no, that miss is actually really bad. Hopefully, okay, the lapse isn't moving, which is good. We're going to move up here with the alchemists. And so essentially, and we're gonna use our Caberjack tanks. Actually, this Alchemist has the most health in the whole group. So let's put the Alchemist pretty close. Um, and let's put our Caberjack somewhat close. Most of these guys have traits that I'm not really a fan of anyway. And if they die, it's not necessarily the end of the world. And I know I sound like an awful person, um, but in Massive Chalice, unlike XCOM, you're gonna have people die. P 
people are absolutely going to die because the game takes place over 300 year period so whether or not you like it uh the people that you use to fight will die and we're going to throw a flask here Ugh, not with that chance we're not let's move a little closer there you go that's good all right so the good thing about the lapse is that when it dies, it pushes you back. And I think we caught a little glimpse of the other lapses over here. So I think we're going to move up to this tile, where I don't think we can yet be seen by them, but we'll still be able to react if they move closer to us next turn. Move up here. Okay, now hope, hopefully... Yep, okay, the seed came in. He's down for a fight. And uh, I think we're just going to caber him. All right, our Kaber was successful there. The thing about the Kaber Jacks and all melee attacks is that while they don't miss, your melee attacks will always hit. Sometimes they'll do a glancing blow, which is basically they almost missed, but uh, they didn't miss so bad that uh, you don't do any damage and you only do like two damage or three damage instead of like 15 or 14 or something massive. So something actually useful. And then you're hero is stuck right next to that enemy uh, and they didn't do that much damage so it's not really looking that good for them so uh, glancing blows are really bad and they can really really burn you and I've had that happen so many times that I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of caber jacks um, I'm more of a fan of hunters and alchemists just because of all the range potential that they have uh, as an XCOM player I do like the ranged <laughs> considering that's all you ever do in XCOM you don't have melee attacks so uh, that kind of stuff is more important to me than anything else. What we're gonna do with, uh, Dexter here is let's unlock the charge ability since he leveled up. And you can unlock abilities for your soldiers in the middle of combat. I shouldn't move him first. I should move, um, the hunter first. You can, you can unlock abilities for your soldiers in the middle of combat, which is super nice. I really like that. Um, that makes, uh, dealing with and adapting to situations so much easier. And I also want to take some time to point out the music. It's so good. It's so good. I, I just... It gets you, like, so in the mood and, like, super, like... It's, it's intense, but it's not, like, annoying intense. And it's not too repetitive to the point where it's just bad. Alright, so we got no baddies over there. Maybe we wanna... Oh. Okay, so this whole, this whole passage loops around. Maybe there's some bad guys over here... Or, considering we found bad guys heading in this direction, maybe we should walk this way. So let's, um, let's start taking some moves to come up to these corners here. Okay, we got a last one. And a seed. Seeds. Alright. Alright, we got one another. Thing, okay, we're gonna get hit here. We're absolutely gonna get hit here. Otherwise, uh, like this is really bad. I should not have... Not the best night oh, should not have moved. Yep, we're getting hit. Ooh. That could have been worse. Yeah, it was a glancing blow. Oh, see? He got hit and he lost XP, so he lost the level. Uh, and I think that was just the guy who we actually just leveled up, so that's really bad. Alright, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna back off with this caber. And with this alchemist, I'm gonna try and throw a flask. Ooh. Uh, I need to back off with this caber as well. And then with this alchemist, I'm gonna try and throw a flask that hits both of these guys. Oh, perfect. Almost perfect. <laughs> it was so close to being perfect. Um, one more. Actually, you know what? You can move a little bit closer. And they're done for. Awesome. And now we're going to move our hunter. We're going to let these two cavers sit in their spots. Because the lapse is going to have to come around the corner before it can even hit us. So we're going to move the hunter back. So hopefully we can take a shot next turn. Yeah. So now he's right in the middle of us. He can't move. And uh, we're just going to go to town on him with some cavers. Oh, that's a glancing blow. That's really bad. Um, a cool thing also about this game is that you can actually change where you hit 
your enemy from. So if you know that your alchemist wants to throw another uh, like flask that's going to hit somewhere over here, then you can actually have your hero punch the laps from this side and get out of the way of the alchemist. But the alchemist here is just going to do another punch, get leveled up. Oh, we all got pushed back. <laughs> all right, awesome. And oh, great! That's all the cadence in the level. About this for a while. Just don't get cocky. There's nothing an enemy loves more than some idiot charging into battle thinking they're invincible. So says the near suicidal Caberjack. I'm not cocky. I'm confident. <laughs> so okay, we didn't get a level here. I think she leveled up, but she did not get a perk. Um, he unlocked charge. So dash in a straight line to cover more ground and ram another character. The further the charge, the more damage and knockback delivered. Also got charge, and got free throw, a quick flash throw that doesn't cost an action point. So, uh, I was under the impression, the first time I got that perk, that you would be able to basically just throw a flask, and then move up and throw another flask, and that's exactly what you can do. However, you only have five flasks for every alchemist. So you gotta be uh, super careful, super sparing of your flasks. Um, I usually only use them uh, if I have two enemies in a close area, and that tends to be seeds a lot of the time. Those little seed guys, they'll run up and get close uh, to each other and close to you because they like to melee attack you. And um, they'll usually all target one of your heroes, so you back off that hero in that turn and then you toss a flask in and get a nice double kill. Um, lapses though, I much, I much prefer to just shoot them from afar with a hunter because I don't want to have them be able to hit any of my heroes and make them lose XP because that's really, really bad. So, Caber Jacks are more just, oh my god, this guy made a bad move, or we were able to trap him, let's absolutely take advantage of this and we gotta punish. So, that's kind of the way that I use all the classes, and uh, I think we're gonna proceed and get some more uh, story stuff and more details here from the Chalice, so I'll let them talk. Um, and then I'll talk about, I think, episode structure for this series, so you guys know how exactly everything's gonna be working out and how everything's gonna be handled. Oh, they're not saying anything. Okay. All right, well, oh, maybe because it's not the tutorial. Okay, I turned off the tutorial. So, uh, this is your realm. This is the world. It's beautiful. Um, and on the outside, all that icky looking stuff is the cadence. And so, essentially mission structure is that, you see these three golden boxes? Mission structure is that cadence will attack first this outer ring uh, the outer ring of territories, and uh, they'll attack two places at the same time, and you can only go and defend one, a la XCOM. Um, the other one fills in one of these three squares, the one that you weren't able to defend. Uh, when three of those squares are filled, that region is lost to the Cadence. In the center is your castle, and, or your capital, sorry. And the capital is kind of cool in the way that you need to start research here. Um, so what I'm thinking about doing, and there's a bunch of different research things that you can do, I think I'm going to start with building a keep. So the only way to ensure that our most powerful bloodlines survive is through keeps. By marrying heroes together as region and partner, the bloodlines have a chance to continue through generations to come. The cost for building keeps increases with each construction. So we're going to build a keep in, uh, one of the inner ring. We want to keep it in the inner ring first, uh, just because it's close to home. Let's build it right up here on the Pale Sea, and so that'll tap, that'll take 5 years and 219 days to finish. In the meantime, we have our own empty keep here already in the Cinderlands, so we're gonna jump in here into the keep, and I'm gonna show you guys what the whole bloodline deal is. So for every keep, you need to appoint a regent and their partner, and so the important part about doing the regent and the partner is that this is where all these traits and the personality stuff comes in. You want people who are good at what they do and have good traits so that um, your future heroes, your future researchers, your future regents will have those traits and will not pass down uh, bad traits like asthmatic or slow or um, sluggish or anything like that. You don't want that. The, pop, the popkas are really good. These guys are really good. And so essentially what you're going to end up seeing happen is you're going to see some bloodlines and some of these houses with their specific sigils essentially rule your 
own kingdom. Like, they're, it's just gonna be that group of people. Um, and the per there's like a bunch of personality traits and a bunch of other things. Oh, I'm really, f I'm really liking these popkis. Okay, so now we have to figure out. I think Catherine is the. Um, I think Catherine's the best one. We don't want the reveler trait. We never want the reveler trait because if your uh, heroes in combat are drunk, then they're gonna not be able to move as fast, and um, they're gonna actually like zigzag pattern everywhere you go. And so if you're trying to avoid a line of sight issue, they'll zigzag and then you'll actually just be in the in a bad place. Catherine here is really good. Uh, I like all of her traits. Hawkeye is really good. Impressionable is good because if you have other heroes in combat that have good traits, then that's going to help them out a lot. Young at heart is okay. Pessimistic is actually really good because sometimes you'll get like a 72% chance and you'll be like, oh, I don't know if I want to take that, but if you realize that they are pessimistic, it's probably more like an 80% chance to hit or uh, an 82 or something like that, and that's always good. And Tranquil, increased accuracy is perfect. She's at a prime age. Uh, she has average fertility. I think we're going to appoint her to be the regent. Um, oh, whoop, whoop, my bad, my bad. Now, these stats over here, I haven't really looked at too much. Like, I don't really know what all of these things do. Evasion, I think, increases the amount of... Uh, increases the percent that your heroes have to not get hit by range attacks. Uh, intelligence, I think, matters for alchemists. Strength matters for cabers. Um... Dexterity matters for hunters. Good HP. Uh, accuracy is good. Speed is good. Uh, sight is good. And I think intuition is like oh, is more uh, for regents. But we're going to appoint her as regent. And now she needs a partner. So now what we have to do is look through all these guys again. And I don't think the Breaker family is getting anywhere. Because they have two asthmatics. So, and one of them has low fertility. And we want children. Uh, Christopher Party here. He's slow. Uh, and another one of his siblings is slow, so that's probably not good. Dexter Rivian. Dexter Rivian uh, is pretty good. The sluggish is not good, but I think, uh, I think we might end up going with Dexter here. We're not looking at the Breaker family, or Breaker family. Turek Rivian is sickly, so I don't think we want to have him. Dane Party is... Yeah, we're not going to look at the Party family either. Oh yeah, we're not looking at the Party family, and we're not looking at the Breaker family. Or House, sorry. House is the right word. Um, uh, well, these guys are okay, but Clumsy and Dim-Witted are not good traits to have. Cocky and... Yeah, that, that's not good. I think we're going to go with Dexter... Yeah, I think we're going with uh, Dexter Rivian. So, Dexter is a caber jack, and Catherine is an alchemist. So when we mix these two guys together, their children will become brutalists. Uh, and I've never actually played with a brutalist, so that's interesting to me. But for each keep that you have, um, it's better if you have a hunter keep, an alchemist keep, and a caber jack keep. Because there's three variations within each of those like big classes they're three subclasses so if you have a caber jack as the regent and then you have an alchemist marry them then they're gonna have some specific type of child uh if you have a caber jack and then you have a hunter marry them they're gonna have a specific type of child and if you have like an alchemist as a regent and you have a hunter alchemist as a regent caber you know the possibilities are there there's like nine classes in total and if you have an alchemist and an alchemist then you're just gonna get pure alchemists from there so uh that's basically the basic structure of the keeps kind of thing. Um, every few years, these guys will have kids, and then when their kids become age 15, they'll be heroes, they'll be able to serve in the army, and they'll finally be able to be useful to us. Um, yeah, so episode structure for this series is something that I want to go over. So uh, I think what we're going to do is... We're going to play through a mission at the beginning of the episode. We'll start off the mission with the nice action-y parts. And then we'll do keep management and timeline advancement and other events until we hit the next mission. And that's where we'll stop the episode. So we're going to stop the episodes uh, after all of the uh, strategy part. So the tactics part is going to be first. And then the strategic overview is going to be second. So let me know what you guys like. 
uh, with that model, if you don't like that model, what you guys think I should do. Um, but yeah, we're gonna advance the timeline here. And in 300 years, the massive chalice will be fully powered and will finally be able to uh, defeat the Cadence once and for all, or not. Alright, babies. Heroic children, known as trainees, are bound to keep their birth in. Cause for celebration indeed. These guys like to talk. Have been born before today. And it was glorious every time, was it not? What, unbearable shrieking and smells that are even worse? <laughs> That's your idea of glorious. Yes. <laughs> there are two kinds of people. Um, but yeah, babies. Heroic children known as trainees are bound to keep their birth in. They are trained by the region and partner in that cave until they are 15, at which point they are transferred to the capital, 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 capital for active duty. So this is Popolo Popki. That's a great name. Um, let's see. All right, he's just impressionable, which is good. Um, Hawkeye and Nearsighted, I think, canceled each other out, and he did not get the brainy trait. But that's okay. You know, that's fine. I'm fine with that. It's a good baby. All right, we're gonna keep advancing the timeline here. It always feels weird awesome. accomplishing something without having beaten it into submission. Mm. Should have seen my books after I was done with them. Awesome. New keep has been completed. Now we have to go through the whole uh, mating thing again. Let's look at Madame Derp here. Dimwitted and slow learner are things that I can look past. They're things that I can look past. I kind of want to keep the derp, the derp name alive too. So I think we're going to make her a regent. And now we need... Oh, you know what? What if we have the Popkey uh, family here? Huh? What do you have? Oh, you have good stats. You have good stats. And we're gonna have Trick Shot, which is good because... And the reason I went with Madame Derp as the regent and not Silvio Popkey is because we already have an alchemist regent in the Popkey sister. Um, so with Madame Derp, she's a hunter regent, so now we'll start getting hunter subclass characters. Um, and I think having a good variety is good because then you can choose to take uh, a squad of hunters on a mission or a squad of all cabers on a mission or sorry uh, Then otherwise you'll be forced to do that kind of stuff where you have only one class for a mission and that can really limit your options in a bunch of situations and uh, When you start narrowing down and you have only one class it gets really really bad uh, I can speak from personal experience and I think we're just gonna yeah, we're gonna roll with Silvio because These guys seem to be pretty good Funland to victories. That is absolutely a great name. House Derp. I love it. Alright, now we have a new research thing to do. And I don't think we're going to be building another keep. That doesn't seem to be necessary yet. Um, oof, I'm just going to get rid of these uh, new things. I think what I want to do is actually discover new heroes. Or actually, no. hero. What does hero discovery boost do? Are volumes of ancient texts about the chalice and its powers lying in the capital basements. And we have good reason to believe that translating them could lead to finding more experienced heroes. Increases the level of discovered heroes by two. Oh, that's huge. That's huge. Um, hero discovery boost coupled with the heroes where you discover new heroes and you get like four or five extra uh, fighters. It's ridiculously useful. Um, I think we're actually going to discover new heroes first though, because if you just noticed, we only have 11 current deployable heroes. Uh, when you marry a regent and their partner, they stay in the keep, they will never ever fight again. So when you get rid of a regent and a partner, you have to actively be willing to part with them on the battlefield. Um, and their traits to make new heroes are almost more important than their skill on the battlefield so if you had like a really really good fighter because of her great traits you might want to make her regent or a partner instead of having her fight because then her children will have those good traits and then they can fight and i noticed that um i've made women both the regents uh it doesn't matter whether you have men or women as regents uh you can also marry women to women uh, for like region and partner and men to men for region and partner uh, but unfortunately that doesn't give you any kids which doesn't seem to make any sense so you probably shouldn't do that um, discover new heroes I think I'm gonna do that I think I'm I think I'm gonna do this so that we can get some more fighters and more options for new traits and then we'll do the uh, hero discovery boost thing after this event oh we got another baby all right so now we have some new 
uh, heroes. We just got our new heroes. Lucia Vigil, our Clover Magnus, Howard Lovecraft, Sasika Strider. All right, so we got five new people, five new fighters. Um, that's good. That's really good. Oh, whoops. And you always want to be doing some research because it's very useful. Uh, so that's something that you're always going to be want to focus on. And now we'll do the hero discovery boost. That's the start that I normally like to do. I like to do keep hero dis hero research or hero discovery and then hero uh, research boost. As you have no doubt surmised by now, it takes time for the cadence to create its forms, so they're only able to attack every few years. Unfortunately, you cannot fight back multiple incursions at the same time. Our primary focus is charging up to destroy our enemy, and we can only allot enough of our energy to send out one group of heroes at a time. Pawns don't last long outside of the Cadence either. So even if you win one battle, it'll be too late to fight the other. Choose wisely and blow the horns! <laughs> yeah, see the dialogues. The dialogue's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, see? The Cadence is attacking here and here, just like I was talking about. Uh, it's two separate areas. So the things to take into account are how much corruption has already happened and for us, nothing's happened yet because we're right at the beginning of the game. And we also have to take into account the Cadence types and uh, the rewards. So, we can get a 32-year-old male alchemist and only face seeds and ruptures, which is kind of good. Uh, or we can get a newborn baby girl and f face lapses, seeds, and ruptures. Now, ruptures are an enemy we haven't fought yet. They're basically suicide sacks. They'll run towards your heroes and then explode on them, and then the area where they explode corrodes your armor. So not only do your heroes take a bunch of damage from the explosion, it's usually, I've been hit with them multiple times, it's usually 10 or 8 or a lot of damage. It's a high damage, significant number. But then your heroes are stuck in that pool, and that pool does like minus 2 or minus 1 every turn that you end in standing in that area. So that's really bad. Uh, and it normally ends up getting at least one of your heroes killed. And so if you're not paying attention to who you send out or you have a potential regent out there fighting, um, you got to be super careful because you can essentially lose a really powerful bloodline. I think I don't want to do lapses, seeds, and ruptures for a newborn baby girl because you don't know what kind of hero the newborn baby girl will be granted over here we have a straight up 32 year old male alchemist but we by the time that we built another keep he's gonna be dead because he's gonna be like 60 and unless he has the long lifespan trait he's gonna be uh completely useless to us um so i think we're oh man it's a tough choice here because it's good because you'll see this and you'll think Man, I'm gonna get a, like a new fighter right now. Perfect. I need more alchemists, or I need this, or whatever. But the research that we're doing is gonna take 10 years, and it took around 12 years. You can see up at the top, year 12, day 187. It took 12 years before we had another mission, and so in 10 years he's gonna be 42, and then in nine more years when we build another keep, he'll be 51, and by then he'll be a little bit too old. The newborn baby girl, however, will be 19, so she's prime age. But we have to fight lapses, seeds, and ruptures, and probably more enemies. I think we're going to go after the newborn baby girl. I'm fine with fighting more enemies because, like I said, we're playing on normal because I'm not very good at the game. Uh, maybe we'll do another future playthrough it, like after this one where we play on like hard or brutal or something like that. But I think we're going to go after the newborn baby girl. So... Now we get to pick our squad. So two of the people feel it? that little tingling in the air before a fight? I know they do. Here is where you can make any last minute substitutions or preparations before you deploy your heroes to battle. Once you give the word, they'll jump in and we'll handle the rest. Make sure they close their mouths when they jump. So these these guys were on the last mission. And you can see that their ages actually all changed. If you go back in the video and look, their ages have changed dramatically by 12 years. So, um, these guys, I, I want to see what they're, okay. 
So the parties are gonna be good fighters for now because if they die, we don't really care because their traits are not good. And I think we have the same kind of deal going with the break with the breakers. I keep calling them breakers. I don't know why. So we have the same kind of thing with the breakers. Rivian, I remember his sibling is actually really good, right? I think he's a regent, but he's sickly, so he has a decreased max HP, which is something that I'm kind of willing to deal with. Now we have a bunch of new people. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Nathaniel Strife is gonna or Strafe is gonna come with us. So the reason being is because we have two alchemists, a caber. Oh no, I don't want to deploy. Oh, thank God it gives you another screen. Now we have a hunter. He's also 51. He's not gonna be able to be in a keep or be a regent, and we don't necessarily want him to. He's clumsy. Uh, he's dim-witted and he's cocky, which is bad. His sibling, though, uh, is good. She is good. She's got bear strength, bountiful. Uh, it's that; Those are good traits, and we want to keep her alive. Plus, she's 26, so she's going to be uh, good for an age when we might have a keep. And Nathaniel, however, is not you know that useful, so I'm fine with letting him die. This is literally... It sounds awful, but this is where you decide who you want to live and who you just don't care about. Now, I'm not going to look at another alchemist. I don't think we need another alchemist. We could use another caber. So how about Mooncaller? Mooncaller has some good stats. She has some good stats. Uh, what about... Oh, th that's it. We don't have any other caber jacks. Okay, so we're going to want to keep uh, Mooncaller... Uh, set aside for setting up the third keep so that way we have a caber jack keep and in fact we might even um, set leave Torek behind as well even though he's got the sickly trait uh, just because we do want a caber jack keep for pumping out caber jack uh, heroes and I keep pressing X instead of a so it's giving us that deploy screen <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we could use another hunter. So how's this Clover Magnus person? Clover Magnus sucks. We don't want slow. Slow. As soon as I see slow, I instantly think that they're a bad uh, person. Not a bad person, but they're a bad uh, fighter. This one's really, really, really bad. Sickly and Reveler. She's 18 and she's a Reveler? How is she draw? Oh, that's that's illegal. You should be ashamed of yourself. We're going to keep Sanswane, Sanswane, like we said before. Um, let's toss Rainbreaker in here. Uh, just, we'll have two of the Breaker siblings. Uh, we'll have three Alchemists, a Caber, and a Hunter. And uh, yeah, we're going to deploy on this mission. And another thing to take into account is the type of enemies you're going to be facing. So since we're facing Ruptures and Lapses, I'm taking four ranged potential characters. We have three people who can throw flasks and one person who can shoot um that's good because we want to blow up the ruptures before they get too close to our fighters and we want to shoot the lapses before they get a chance to shoot us the seeds can be taken care of by the alchemists and the cabers as well uh or the caber the lone caber turek because he'll just be able to punch him or whatever and then uh we'll be done with those guys so i think we have a pretty good squad here for this kind of mission let's deploy with this vanguard and uh see what kind of map we got going on may the horns of battle carry you to victory ah all right so we have a uh, enemy seed right off the bat but we'll be dealing with all this in the next episode thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this first episode of Massive Chalice. It was a really long one because I did a lot of explaining and stuff. Um, don't worry, uh, the next one shouldn't be too, too bad. But if you guys like the long tactical uh, episode format, I am more than willing to uh, produce these longer videos for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, drop a like on this video for the uh, first episode in the series. It's going to be exciting. And I'll see you all next time. Peace.